something a.m. And it's 28 degrees out. Early November. And I'm driving almost four hours to chase a rumor. A big fish. In a small river. Cool. no longer warm. Alright, we aren't even out of out of reach of the the bridge and we got the strainer all the way across. Alright, I've made it through this path because I couldn't go any further that way. It was just too low. But as you can see I got a little bit a little bit in my way. I can take these out. I'm going to hit these real quick with the uh, the new chainsaw and uh, keep going upstream. See what I can see what I can find. I get some eye protection on first. Go ahead and remove the scabbard and uh, let's see. Left hand here, right hand here and I gotta bring it back that way. I like how it's quiet. It's not starting up a gas engine, which draws attention. That should get me through. So, this is the battery powered, there's a lithium battery pack right here, just like on the uh, Torquedo fairly lightweight way to carry a whole lot of power. Um, the only challenge I haven't really overcome is I haven't found a dry bag big enough for this. I may be ordering a watershed dry bag just for this. Um, on this first trip I just I gotta be careful and just to make sure I don't knock it in. Um, uh, I got the night eyes you know gear twist ties on there that I lash it to the seat. All right, I've made it across. I'm up there, but this this one was was difficult. Even with removing those couple limbs, I'm going to make it easier on myself <laughs> on the return back coming through there. Uh, I don't want to take the whole thing out. The whole thing is sort of a deterrent for others to go up there, which means I have it for myself. Um, but anything above this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out, unless it's real big, but I definitely want to remove that one right there, just so my return trip is a little bit easier than what it just was. Made sure I had very good secure footing. Before I come in with this, I do not want to risk submersion. I'm halfway through and I looked at where my kayak was and there's one branch that I think is close to my rods. I gotta move move the kayak. You know, this is the kind of thing that I think Chris Watts was trying to to teach me in that safety training. Always be aware of your surroundings. And uh, I look at the end of that log. I didn't look around first. You gotta look around and see, all right, what's the worst thing that could happen here? And you know, take whatever steps you need to to prevent that. I haven't done a good job with that yet. Hopefully I just saved my rods from being destroyed. Alright, 
the uh, kayak's well out of the way now. <clears throat> There. I think I might try pushing. You know what? You're right. Yeah, I'm gonna push that just so I'm away from it. It's ready to go. So, the way that it's weighted, I think it's just going to swing down. Because it's propped there, it's going to go straight down. So, I'm just going to push it. Good. Got my twin spin spinner bait that I just did the, uh, the video on how to make these. I'm going to give that a shot. I like them because they can very easily go through all this this wood and it's also a a slower presentation for this cooler water because of all that lift that those uh, those blades provide. Let's put it into this brush and see if anyone's home. That didn't take long. You know, within sight of that, of where I just cut that log down, just past it. Look at the color on that. That is a beautiful fish. I'm gonna keep going. That's awesome. It's so worth the effort. I think it's gonna be good. So my retrieval speed is is definitely slow. I want it to get down in the water column a little bit, and I want to swing it in the direction of wherever the wood is. I think they're, I think they're beautiful, but I think they're uh, not quite used to the coldness we got. It's, like I said, 28 degrees this morning, and he didn't fight real good. I didn't mean that is an insult, fish. It's just you're allowed to be cold. So it looks like we got another one that's all the way across. Um, I'm going to sit here a minute and just drop my anchor and look at it for a second and assess, just kind of think through while I look at it, hey, what's, what's the best approach? While I do that, while I decide what I'm going to do with my chainsaw, we're not. <clears throat> I'm definitely putting a jig in there before I go stir it up. So, I think skipping it right underneath, up in there. Let me check my drag. Yeah, I need that tighter. So I'm just wading up because it seemed pretty shallow. I think I can walk up there. I'm going to walk it before I grab my saw. 
make sure it's not. Alright, we got a plan. I'm gonna go do it. This, uh, let's see if you can see that. So, I want to cut that little bottom piece. I'm gonna notch that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it out. And then, I don't think it's supporting anything. I think it's supported over there. But I'm gonna stay back from it in case I'm wrong. Um, and then I'm gonna, I think I wanna cut, hmm. I think I'm gonna cut that side. I basically wanna create a path right there. I'm not gonna try and mess with it in the middle because it's, it's deeper and I only need a little route through the side. So that's what I'm gonna take. All right, I've done a good bit of work on this. It's not removed, but I'm okay with that because I can get across it now. I'll show you what I mean. Um, we removed that part so it has a place to drop down there. Most of my significant cuts are right there in the middle. And it's, if I lean on this, this one part that I left, I mean, it's, you can see it's, it's shaking in there. It's ready to go. But I'm confident that with the next high water event, it'll knock it out. I just don't need to be right next to it when it goes. Um, I'm gonna take the, take the boat and bring it right up to it, flop the anchor over, walk around, and then pull it that way. So that if it does go just from the weight of my boat, which I don't think it will, it's not coming on me. That's, that's the main thing. I don't wanna have my leg pinned by this log if it decides to go. But I'm happy, you know, letting it, letting it go the final little bit of it, not under my force. I'm good with that. The river will take care of that. All right, let's keep going, find some more fish. I'm looking pretty good waves up there, and I feel good about that I've opened up. Well, I, I've opened up some more water. I don't know how much more, but it's at least not, hey, you turn the corner and there's another one, darn it. Uh, it's, I feel like I've, you know, the work I did on that one was, was worthwhile. I mean, they're all worthwhile. Because none of these, none of these rivers are rivers that you would do flip trips on because of all the laydowns, because of all the strainers. It's just one after another. It's it's small water, and no one no one comes here. There are probably some duck hunters that you know that hike into very specific spots. Which I just saw a bunch of ducks right there. Um, it'd be a great place to duck hunt. This would be a really fun way to do it, for sure. All right, well, I don't think I want to mess with that one. I've come up as far as I think I want to. Uh, we'll leave that strainer for another day. And um, most of the reason for that, I mean, I still got juice in the, uh, in the lithium battery powered chainsaw. Uh, I, could, I certainly could go at it. Um, but my decision is based on the fact that I got more bites further down. It just seems like there's slower current down there. And I think for sure, all of this is great habitat that we've opened up so that when I come back here in the spring, um, I got, and I, I think probably I've opened up a mile and a half of good water that, that no one fishes, that I think in the spring is going to load up with fish. I think most of those fish have pulled down to 
the wider portion and the deeper portion where there's more tributaries coming in and making it bigger as it gets bigger it gets slower in current this all has pretty good current and the places that i've caught fish on the way up have been areas with with very little current at all so let's go back downstream and uh and put a jig on some of those areas with very little current he came at that really slow what's up pickerel So I'm way back in one of the little swampy type areas that it kind of kicks out to the side. And uh, I don't know, just exploring. There's no current up in here. And uh, throwing a jackhammer around, getting a little, little chain pickerel. Watched him come up and slash at it. That's cool. So, just making my way back down and using the using the twin spin chain pickerel. You can go back. I will make a note, keep a record of what this cubic feet per second is as a reference point and I know in the spring when we come back I will I will check it and wonder all right how many cubic cubic feet per second did it say it was at when I was there back in November and that's that's important information. You know, it gives me a comparison. You know if this was say double the flow I think it might still be doable. You get to triple the flow and yeah, that stuff is coming at you too fast. I don't know that I would want to be here. I think it would be muddier as well. But who knows? Recording your your trip's success in terms of what you caught, but also the cubic feet per second is, is such important information. made my way back down towards the bridge. I really didn't fish any of the area near the bridge, uh, mostly because I guess I kind of figured it's it's going to have, you know, bank fishing pressure. So that may be a mistake because there is a lot of calm water right here at the bridge. I'm going to get that. So many things getting tangled. Yeah, you gotta come down. What do you got? We got oh nice. Big pickerel. Yeah. Hi. Get in the net. Oh, you're big. How big are you? Slow rolling there. The twin spin over that log. I watched him come up. Man, he's almost. You know, most of the ones you get are real skinny, but he's a fairly stout chain pickerel. Look at all them teeth. Alright, I'm going to let you go. 
Let's see how big they are first. And they're about for a minute. It, there's a bigger one in here. It's a 22 incher. Nice. 22 inch. Nice 22 inch chain pickerel. Let this guy swim off. See you later. Go. There he goes. Cool. More shorts. YouTube shorts. If you're if you subscribe to the channel and you're just watching the videos, you gotta check out the live uh, the live feed and then shorts. It's basically YouTube's answer to TikTok. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but same kind of platform. I put a whole bunch of stuff on there. 60 seconds or less. Make sure you check it out. Coming over the log and boom. Let it drop. Keep going. So I noticed that the nature of the of how this river was had changed when we came to the other side of the uh, the bridge. It kind of slowed down, and I realized, you know, now that we're in front of this this dam, this beaver dam, that uh, this is really the reason why it's pulled up so much. Catch a couple of fish off of this thing. And keep going. So I think I can I can get up through that stuff. See that? Looks like I'm not the only one that brings a chainsaw in here and cleans things up. I've started to motor back. This is a very unique environment in it's not very typical for the types of rivers that I'm used to floating. Um, it's low gradient. It doesn't, it has flow, but it's not like really fast. It's got little swampy areas on the side. It, it, it braids out. That's one of the things I'm concerned why I'm like, all right, it's, it's 4.30, gets dark a little before six. Um, and I think I'm probably three and a half miles from from the launch, from the the bridge there. What concerns me is that it braids out in different different areas, and I don't want to come up through here, pick the wrong path, go a mile up, and then realize I'm nowhere near where I need to be, or or you go up and it's impassable. Everything that I've come since the bridge is passable with some effort. And, and people have kept up with chainsawing strainers um, on this section. What I did above the bridge, I'm more excited to go back to that in the spring than I am coming back down. Because of pressure, maybe, I don't know. I, I think the fishing could be fantastic down here. Um, but we've, you know, we had a little bit of a cold snap, really cold. And, um, you know, I, I don't think I'm getting a true assessment of what this fishery really could be. I think it's actually fished pretty well, considering. So, I've enjoyed the day. There's a couple spots that I'll hit on the way back. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, drive back up to Maryland knowing that, hey, there's a little creek down here in, in Virginia that uh, I, I definitely have to come back to in the spring. Cool area.